Hello Antwerps, welcome to Let's Build Computers. Uh, today we're going to be taking a first impressions walk around the H440 mid tower case. This is the black and red edition of it, which I haven't seen before. So I'm hoping that this is going to turn into a really tasty computer. Um, so let's take this out of the box, I'll do you a quick tour of the case, and then we'll start building something in it. Okay, right. This thing looks awesome in the red and black. NZXT have got a thing for very plain fronted cases, especially in sort of uh, gloss white. And it's no, I make no secret on this channel that I'm not a fan of that kind of style. I mean, it's, it looks great, it's just not my cup of tea. I think it looks a bit too much like a dishwasher, personally. Uh, but with this one, we've got the matte finish on it, um, which, um, uh, yes, it's a black box, and you could say that black boxes are boring, but I think it looks a bit slicker than gloss white, in my opinion. Although I'll tell you what they should do, they should bring back piano black, that's gloss black, because that's also pretty cool. Um, so obviously this has got plastic wrap on the screen, so this would look a lot nicer without that, but I'll take that off after I finish the build. Uh, let's open this up and take a look. Whoop. Right, so from the front going round, um, the front is completely plain, we've got an NZXT logo at the bottom, that is completely it. So this is very much a case of, um, you know, either have it side on, or if you like flat fronted cases, that's fine. Uh, one thing that I'd always like to do if I had a case like this that I had front on, I'd probably get some kind of design spray painted or stenciled onto this, and I think that would look awesome. This gives you a really nice flat surface to customise. Um, moving on to the top, we've got two USB 3s, two USB 2s, headphones and microphone. Then we've got the uh, reset and power buttons there. These are tactile switches, so they're clicky rather than uh, vandal proof depression style switches. I'm not a fan of tactile switches myself. However, it seems to be the general trend on most cases these days, so it's not really surprising. Um, I'm not sure if we've got a hard drive light up here. That might be built into this ring around the power light. We'll find out when we start it up. And um, then the front panel, that comes straight off, I believe, on this case. Yeah, this is another thing that the NZXTs have going for them, is that the front panel just comes straight off. And uh, again, you'll notice from my battles with um, Cor Corsair cases, as much as I love Corsair cases, their front panels are a pain in the backside to remove. Um, so this is one thing that I do like about NZXTs, and that's good because these, uh, um, these dust filters that you get on the front, you want to clean these out routinely if you can. And uh, when you can remove the front panel that easily, it's a very straightforward job. Um, so behind that, we've got triple 120 millimeter fans straight out the box. So that's a really nice touch. You get a lot of fans in this as standard. And we've got a 140 at the back of the case, unless I'm mistaken as well. We just turn that around to show you. There's our 140 at the back there. Um, we've got nothing at the top as standard, but to be honest, four fans pre-fitted is pretty good value for money. So let's put this front panel back on. That just slots into the bottom there, and then it magnetizes onto the top. Bang, back on. Come on, Corsair, I want that. I want that on the 400C, because my 400C is a pain in the ass to clean. All right, so, let me turn my brightness up because it's very black inside this case. As aforementioned, we've got the 140mm fan at the back and we've got full ATX bay here uh, with cable management here. This cable management is at an angle, so you've got a nice depression behind there to hide the cables in. Um, and then we've got this full height hard drive cage here. We can fit allegedly 11 drives in there if you're bonkers enough to have 11 drives. But the good news is, is it, it does mean that this case is very expandable. So if you want, if you need to run a RAID array, or if you're just running multiple drives in general, um, this is a fairly compact case, all things considered. This is not much bigger than cases like the uh, Corsair 400C or the NZXT S340. It's not much bigger than those cases, but has a colossal amount more space for drives and stuff like that. So you do get a lot more options. If you're doing one of your first builds, and you're a bit worried about cable tidying and stuff like that, this is going to be a much easier case to work with. So uh, down the bottom here, we've got two specific SSD mounting bays. So you can put your SSDs there, or obviously these uh, hard drive bays as well, they will accept SSD drives. You can screw them into there. 
And so now moving down a little bit, we've got the most prominent feature in this, which is a signature for most NZXT cases, which is this big enclosure that goes over the top of your power supply. Um, now, uh, if you've got a fancy power supply that you want to show off, this isn't fantastic. However, it does provide a huge void to hide all of the cables in. And so this is really good for making cable tidying super easy. Um, so this particular one, I believe this NZXT logo is going to light up. It looks like it will. We'll find out when we turn it on. Um, however, one of the more slightly annoying things about it is that it is a rear mount um, uh, power supply. So what happens is this plate here unscrews and comes out and you thread the power supply in the back. Um, and then we will have access to uh, thread all the cables through and tidy the other ones by removing this back panel. And then we'll have access to all of those cables out the back here and in this huge void. Um, so you'll also notice that we have a built-in um, fan power uh, bus here to power all the onboard fans. Um, this is powered from a Molex connector. I'm not sure if we'll be using this or not because this doesn't appear to have any real speed management on it, which means it's just going to run all the fans at maximum speed. And I'm not a fan of that, quite frankly. It's going to be very noisy. So in all probability, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this or not. I'll probably be looking to rewire everything. We may even take some of these fans out. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Um, so you'll see there is actually a lot of wiring in this case out of the factory. Um, and that's just to connect up all the various lights and other bits and bobs on it. Um, so, uh, so it should look really nice once it's up and running. So the last bit that I do need to point out is um, uh, we do have top mount fan base here. Um, so that is a triple 140 mil um, bay. So you could put a massive radiator up the top there um, and all of the fans that are there will blow out of this vent, uh, which is along the side and down the back as well. So uh, you can run top mount stuff on this. That's probably where we're gonna put the water cooling rad for the build that I'm doing. Um, so yeah. Let's build a computer in this and we'll see how nice it is to use and see how cool it looks when we're done. I'll see you guys after the cut. Right, so let's see what we've got in our bag of tricks. We've got a tiny little product catalog here, which is nice to show you what else you could have bought if you didn't buy this case. We've got metric or fine thread screws, quite a lot of those. Um, we have a spare standoff and we also have a, um, a standoff adapter. So. This is a screwing tool that you put a Phillips head on one side and the other side fits over the standoff. Um, we've also got a additional case badge. Um, we have a set of four self-tapping fan screws, a set of imperial or coarse thread screws, uh, another set of imperial coarse thread screws. These have the hexagonal top, so they're the old style ones. And then finally, we've got a selection of zip ties here, cable ties. Um, now the hard drive bays, this is really nice actually. This is a nice metal hard drive bay. It's got a rubber pad at the bottom, so it's got uh, anti-vibration mounts there, so the hard drive doesn't buzz through the rest of the computer. As aforementioned, it does have two and a half inch um, mounting holes on it as well, so you can put SSDs in here. I haven't decided if I'm gonna put the SSD in one of these bays or at the front yet. You could put it at the front to show it off, but on the other hand, I have found from past experience that it's kind of annoying to wire those up and uh, I might be inclined to put it here and just hide it away. Uh, now, this weird backplate thing will seem very unfamiliar to most people because very few cases have these things. However, uh, my home computer is an old school Cooler Master and the old school Cooler Masters used to use these, so I'm used to seeing them. But uh, as I say, the reason why we have these things is it basically means that we can put the power supply straight into the back of the case and it means that they don't have to have a big gap in, on either side of it to hold that up. Now theoretically, you can mount your power supply either way up in this case. The mounting does prohibit you to do that. Um, however, because of this enclosure over the top, you're gonna want it to be fanned down so the bottom intake there can be the intake for your power supply. And that intake, that does have a dust filter on it as well. So you don't need to worry about it choking the power supply. But don't forget that this filter exists. They do clog up with dust very quickly, which is why I'm notoriously skeptic about using uh, bottom mount fans. Right. Now, unfortunately, once we've got the power supply in, that does actually prohibit our access to the back of it. So um, it's slightly annoying to do that. What I would advise doing 
is before you actually permanently screw your power supply in, you're gonna to wanna to work out what chains that you're going to need attached to it. So you can get those all connected up first and then thread the whole thing in. Um, however, that's a first world problem. It's not a particular criticism of the case. Um, but we'll leave that in for the time being. Um, I'm going to get my motherboard fitted next, just so I can start seeing where my cables are gonna go and we'll start bringing this thing together. Let's see how well that goes in. Oh, that fits surprisingly low down. That's looking really good for both, um, that's looking really good for this case. We've got a huge amount of space up the top here to mount that water cooler. Uh, there are some cases, especially ATX cases, where the motherboard comes up very close to the top of the case and your water cooler actually tends to sometimes foul the top of the board if you have uh, heat sinks here and stuff like that. So really good space internally in here. Now, see, that's interesting. You know, I'm just gonna check the uh, um, the quick start guide for this case because uh, this has got a PWM power cable here and I, have, I suspect that this thing is powered from the power supply, but it can receive a control signal from your motherboard's fan controller. And that would be really clever if it can do that. So, because that would mean that we can, because uh, obviously the, the motherboard has got a lot of power, uh, fan connectors on it, but it doesn't have enough to power all these fans. But if we can uh, drive all of these fans from a single motherboard connector, that would be super cool. Hmm. You know what, the instructions are really fuzzy about this. They don't specifically state what this thing does. However, they do state that you connect the, um, the PWM cable here to the motherboard, as well as this to the power supply. So it looks like my assumption that the whole thing is powered from a Molex connector and controlled from the, from the PWM connector, that seems to be accurate. So uh, we're gonna hook that up and see how this thing works. I really hope that this thing works as, I, as, I, as it seems to, because that would be really cool. However, the instructions could be a lot clearer, to be honest. So that's gonna go up to there. So I'm just gonna roughly position that where I want it to go. Now, annoyingly, I need to fit an entire extra chain for Molex connectors to power this thing. Considering the age that we live in now, really this could have done with having a serial ATO connector on it. Not because it needs it, but just so we don't need a Molex connector because anyone, again, any modern PC builder will know that we don't use these things anymore. And any can, this is a terrible connector, it needs to go away. So next revision, put a SATA connector on it, please. Okay, our system is starting to take shape now. So, so far, I've had no major ball aches with this case. Um, I mean, as I say, you wanna make sure you have all the chains that you're gonna use fitted to that power supply because the space around the back here is very narrow to work in. You can't plug stuff in there unless you're working entirely blind. But with all this big cable void, I can just shove all the cables in there and they're completely invisible. So I don't need to sit down and, and wrap them into elegant shapes or anything like that. I can just bundle everything down here and it's immediately out of sight and invisible. So that's really nice to work with. There's loads of space. You can have gazillions of power cables down here. You can have a massive, however many kilowatts you want power supply if you're so inclined, it will all fit in there, which again is an improvement over some of the other cases that I've seen, such as uh, you guys may have watched my um, Corsair 400C video. Now granted, that's a smaller case than this, but on that 400C, which again had a power supply enclosure, it was practically mandatory to use a um, modular power supply. Whereas this one, I'd have no such troubles with that. Although once again, never not modular. But on principle, lots of space, good design. I like it. And likewise, um, the slight slope we've got in the back plane here means that this bundle of cables coming down the case isn't gonna foul up the back panel when I put it in place. So we've got our, uh, uh, we've got our, our fan going into the system fan here. The instructions recommend that we connected it to the CPU fan socket but the instructions also recommend connecting the CPU fan to this. Now, I don't wanna do that. I trust the CPU fan to the motherboard. Um, so I've, I've connected this to the system fan, so that way all of these will be treated as system fans by the motherboard, and they can monitor the speed of those fans based on system temperature, not just the CPU temperature. That's good. The CPU temperature will be largely irrelevant to this case because we're water cooling, so it's a whole different kettle of fish. And on that note, let's get our water cooling in. Now, like with the front panel, the top panel just pops off. 
I'm just pinching together uh, these bits here just to make it come off a little bit easier, but realistically, you can just pull it off. Right, and in goes our water cooler. Oh. I'm gonna need to remove that back fan just to clear these hoses. We've got plenty of, uh, we've got plenty of exhaust between these two, so I'm not worried about losing this back fan. It'll just clear the ins inside of the case up a little bit, reduce the clutter. Okay, so as you can see, that fits in with room to spare. So there's no concern about the fans fouling over your RAM or anything like that. So you can put in big, mem big tall mini modules with lots of heat sinks on them and stuff if you want. Uh, and in addition to that, we're also gonna get some airflow around these heat sinks, which is good as well. I have, I have set up water cooling before where the fan just sort of comes just over these heat sinks. So unfortunately, they're not really getting any airflow. They don't need a whole ton of it, but it's nice to have. Um, it does cut in kind of close to where the, um, um, the CPU power connector normally is on most motherboards, but it's just fitting in there, so that's okay. Um, now with the rails, I can actually slide that considerably further in that direction if I want to. However, due to the way those hoses are gonna come around like this, I want it as far to the back of the case as I can, which is the main reason why I've removed that fan. So that will just allow those hoses to bend around like that, and that will just sit about there. And as you can see from this angle, should I want to, I can fit in a 280 mil radiator using these extra rails down here for 140 millimeter wide fans. And that does extend all the way up to here. So you can have a huge, great long water, uh, water cooling radiator there, should you wish. And if you took out a whole load of the uh, hard drive bays down this cage here, you'd be able to fit all your water cooling gubbins in there as well. So very versatile case, despite the fact that it has this huge cage in it. Okay, so our H440 is doing us proud so far. It's got all the hardware in it and we've barely scratched the, well, it's, it's accommodating everything comfortably with no fuss. So we just want to fit in our drives now and we're about ready to run. Uh, now I wish I'd done this before the graphics card because realistically I want to use those two bays if possible to keep everything nice and low down. So um, I'm just going to wrangle these two out from around the back of the PCI Express power cable. So my final impressions on the case, on the H440 Red Edition. Um, it's been a great build. Um, this case has got loads and loads of utility in it. You know, we've got shed loads of space for drives and things like that. It was straightforward to build in. The power supply has got lots of room, but it's kind of fiddly to work at the back of it. You know, you really need to pull the power supply out if you want to connect any additional lines to it. But I can forgive that. Uh, this logo does light up. However, it's fairly dim. You can't see it very well at the moment. You only really notice it when it's in the dark. And that is sort of tasteful, but it's not in keeping with most of the other LEDs that you'll find on a modern computer. As you can see, the other accent lighting we've got on the motherboard, the Corsair H100 and the graphics card are way outshining this by a long shot. So um, I'm not hugely impressed by the lighting there. That could have, I think they should make that brighter. But that much being said, we do also have the, uh, the backdrop lighting on the back panel, and I'm a big fan of this. This can be turned on and off, so if I push this button here, these LEDs can be turned on and off on the fly. So if they're a bit intrusive, you can just switch them off, but because that's a nice, easy to fumble for button, you can turn them on when you want. Now, we all know the nightmare of fumbling in the dark behind your computer to plug something in. Um, so I really like having these LEDs here to provide some illumination so you don't have to get your phone out and turn on a torch. Um, so really nice touch. One slight niggle that I do have is the power LED. Um, as you can see, it's kind of supposed to light up this ring here, but it doesn't. It just lights up like half of it. Put another LED on the other side or just ditch the ring and have a, just a, a dot LED or something like that. But as I say, I am nitpicking and these are minor things. Um, so the airflow of the case um, is fantastic. You know, we've got a nice steady breeze coming out of this top vent here. So that works really nicely. Very impressed. I love the case. 
it's a fantastic all-rounder. So, all in all, great job, would recommend. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye for now.